Hi, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about a really cool free tool that you can use to create procedurally generated space backgrounds like these. I'll cover the basics of how the tool works, how to convert the exports to a format that Godot can use, and the best settings to get the highest quality from them for your project. This program is called Spacescape. I'll link to it in the description, but it basically generates noise textures you can combine to create pretty complex scenes. Let's open up one of the default projects to see how it all comes together. A scene consists of layers that you can see in this list, and every layer is either a star layer or a noise layer. Stars can be billboard stars, these relatively big ones that are actually images, or point stars. It looks like they're using multiple layers of point stars to make some of them brighter, but if we take a closer look, some of these stars are only spawning on top of this nebula. This is because you can actually use the same noise settings for the stars as you do for your noise layers to get them in areas where you want them. For the noise, we also have two choices here. We either have FBM noise, which is used as the gas cloud background, or ridged noise, which is the brighter nebula here. One thing you'll notice is that there's actually two copies of the ridge noise with very similar settings. The only difference is the threshold and the color. The threshold is basically how much of the texture is cut off based on the generated alpha, which means that the layer with the higher threshold is only covering the brightest parts of the layer with the lower threshold. You can use this trick to generate a sort of highlights for the noise, adding a bit more depth. So now that we're done editing the skybox, let's export it and convert it into a panorama. Choose a name and let's look at our export options. We can choose the file type and we need six images here for the conversion, but I'll choose JPEG for the smaller file size. The image size at 4096 pixels is good and finally in export 4 choose Unity because the online converter we'll be using takes cube maps and that format. When the export is done, go to the website that I'll link in the description and start inputting the images that we exported. Here we're just matching the names of our images to what face we clicked on. Once you you input the last one, you should see something like this. By default, the converter rotates the top and bottom images, so we'll set those rotations to zero and click update to get rid of the seams. Once you don't see any seams, we are ready to convert. Turn off the apply mipmap setting because that makes our image blurry and change the export resolution to 7680 by 4320 or 8K. Then click download and that should give us a panorama image we can use in Godot. Now get it into our project files and click on the import tab. Right now it's in lossless mode which means it will be using 94 megabytes of video memory when our game runs, so we'll instead choose the VRAM compressed mode, then turn on the high quality setting which means that the quality will be indistinguishable from lossless, but once we click re-import we can see that it now only uses 31 megabytes of VRAM. When that's done, we can go into our game's world environment, make sure that we have a panorama sky in there, and put our new texture into the panorama attribute. And there you go, some crazy good looking skyboxes that you can edit and create your own for all your space game slash night level needs. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, if you did, consider leaving a like, and check out my level design tutorial if you haven't seen that yet. And I'll see you guys next time.